Hello and welcome everybody. In this episode, I will be talking about a warranty sale, a new feature that became available in Dynamics 365 for finance and operation. This feature enables retail organizations to sell warranty service when a cash and carry transaction or a sales order transaction is being completed on the POS terminal. At this point in time, this feature is not available for call center sales orders. This feature is not to be confused with asset management functionality that allows to create warranty for assets. The new feature became available in two phases. In release 10.010, .10, that feature became available for cash and carry sales. And in the subsequent release of 10.011, the warranty sales were enabled for sales orders. So what do we need to do in order to configure that functionality? First, we would need to create a warranty item. In this example, I'll show you how, which fields you would need to create and populate in order for you to create a new warranty item. So I'm going to navigate to the list of, of my release products. I'm going to click on new. And under product type, you would need to select a service. And under product service type, you would need to select a warranty. And once you populate the rest of the fields, you would create a new warranty item. In this example, I will use the already created item 99991. Let's take a look at a few fields for that warranty item. If we scroll down here under the warranty tab, right under sell, we see that there is a price range defined for this item. It can be none, that means that this warranty item is always gonna be recommended. If you select the base price, which is the only other option that is available uh, during that release, is you would need to populate the lower and the upper limit for the warrantable item. So the way it works, if you are selling a camera that falls that has a price between $100 and $10,000. In this case, this specific warranty will be recommended. It will be prompted. You don't have to add it, but it, at least it will be suggested during the sales process. But if you're selling an item that is below $100 or above $10,000, that in this particular example, this warranty item will not be recommended. On the right-hand side, you also see the length of the warranty. In this case, you see it's two years. But you can also notice that these two fields are grayed out and they're non-editable. They're non-editable on the release product form, so we need to navigate to the product form itself. So when you click on the product number, you would go to the product form, and if you scroll down here, you would be able to define a duration of your warranty in days, weeks, months, or years. Once you have completed the setup of your warranty item, you would have to make sure that it is added to the store assortment and you execute a distribution job to update your retail channel. Next, we will review the warranty settings. We will navigate to Retail and Commerce module, expand the warranty, and click on Warranty Settings. This form is used to define at which retail stores the prompt will be displayed when eligible warrantable item is added to a transaction. For this demonstration, I will be using the POS terminal in Houston store, and you can see that the prompt for warranty is enabled here. Under number sequence, you would also need to specify the number sequence that will be used when warranty policies are generated. That's a table that gets populated when we process our warranty transactions that can be subsequently used in an extension that you build or for integration with a third-party solution. Once that is done, we will now go and review the warranty groups. Warranty groups are used to define the list of warrantable items, the items that can trigger the addition of the warranty, as well as the applicable warranty items. On the bottom section here, you see that I have specified three warrantable items, 101, 100, and 0003. In order for that functionality to work, your warrantable items have to have a serial number dimension active. So it can be either active or active for the sales process. And in the middle section right here, we see that we have two warranty items. The first one is for one year warranty and the second one is for the two years. So in this case, when we add an item, two of those warranties will be suggested, recommended to us, and we can select one of those or none. You can also uh, define a display order for those warranty items that will show up in the prompt. Once you've done setting up your warranty groups, you would need to publish that update and run a channel distribution job. And an optional setup, you can also add two more POS buttons. One will be used to add a warranty and another one will be add a warranty to an existing transactions. So let's take a look where they are. I'm gonna to navigate to my POS channel right now. I'm going to, uh, this is my transactional screen and I will add one of those warrantable items. 
I will search for item 101. I will select it. I see the price is $9.99, so it falls between $100 and $10,000. I will click on Add to Transaction. Because this is a serial number active uh, item, I would need to specify a serial number here. I'm going to click OK. And once I do that, I see the prompt that shows me two warranty items that we saw here. So I can either add it for $199 for one year or for two years for $299. It's worth noting that only one warranty item can be added to a single transaction. So you cannot select two items here. If you select the first one and then you try the second one, you see that this one gets grayed out. So you can add only one sales uh, warranty. So I'm going to select a one year for $199 and I'm going to click on Add to Transaction. Now let's take a look at our transactions. So now it has two items, my camera, the warrantable item, as well as my warranty item for $199. Let's say that the customer has changed his mind and now he wants to add a two-year warranty instead. So there are a few things that you would need to do. You would need to select the original warranty for one year and you would need to void that line. Once you voided that line, you need to select the warrantable item, that uh, Nikon camera, and then use one of those buttons that we have added, which is called Add Warranty. And that's again will show us the same prompt with two warranty item selection. And we're going to select a two-year in this case and I'm going to click on that. So now we have removed the one-year warranty item and added a two-year warranty item instead. For this demonstration, I will complete a, single, a simple cash and carry transaction, so I will not create a sales order, but it's worth noting that you can also do the same thing when you create a sales order transaction. So I'm going to pay cash here, and I'm going to complete my sale. The next step, you would need to bring these retail transactions into your retail headquarters. You would need to run a distribution job to bring those transactions in, and then you would need to process, validate and process those transactions through posting of the statement. Once that is done, we can see results of it inside of Dynamic 365. So we can go and we can, for example, check the inventory transaction for that warranty item. So we're going to search for that item right here. And we're going to click on Manage Inventory Transactions so we can see that because we have processed that transaction through retail statement, we see a sales order number and we see the issues tr transaction for that warranty item. So where else can we see the warranty transactions that got generated? At this point, there are no forms that you can see it at, so you would need to use a table browser instead. One of those tables that shows you those retail transactions, uh, warranty transactions, is called Retail Warranty Transaction Sales. And I use this uh, OData syntax to actually show the content of that table. And here we see two transactions uh, for the warranties that got generated. In order for you to see the results in your warranty policy table, we would need to execute an additional job. So we would need to navigate to our commerce, retail and commerce module again. And we would need to click on this process warranty transactions. In order for us to complete that run, we would need to select our retail store. Houston. What that job does, it goes and consolidates those warranty transactions into another table that is called warranty policy. Again, this table is, does not have a form yet. And uh, in my conversations with Microsoft employees, they said it's, it's, uh, it's going to be that functionality will be soon added. But once uh, that table is populated, the content and records of that table can be used to create an extension, to create a form that can be used to process those warranty transactions, or it can be integrated with uh, another third-party solution. And here we see a warranty table, warranty policy table that got populated with one record right here. Uh, that was a quick overview of new warranty sale functionality that was added for Dynamics 365 for Commerce. I hope you enjoyed that overview. Until the next time.